I was diagnosed with an incurable cancer of the central nervous system. The next day there was an American doctor. He came in, he was trialing a test drug called DTIC. The drug had never been used on humans before, only on animals. They were going to trial it on 25 patients. Sadly, 24 out of the 25 that were on that drug died. I say to people all around the world that I'm one of the lucky ones, but I never say I'm one of the lucky ones because I'm still alive. I say I'm one of the lucky ones because I wasn't my mum. He will never go to school. He will never play sport. He'll be a housebound baby. And if he reaches his teenage years, it'll be a miracle. Doctor left. Mum walked through the curtains. I made out I didn't hear what the doctor said. I said, what did the doctor say? She said, oh, the doctors told me everything was going to be okay. Unfortunately, at the age of 12, from the side effects of that drug that I had as a baby, I suffered my first major heart attack. I was in hospital for four months and I became a depressed little boy. Three years after being told I'd never play sport again, I made the under-16 Australian Expos baseball team and I got a chance to fly to America and achieve my dreams. I got a chance to fly to the other side of the world and do something that people told me all my life I'd never be able to do. At the age of 17, I was lucky enough to sign a full-ride scholarship to live in America and play baseball. I slid into a base in Arizona and woke up three days later. Heart couldn't compete. Never played baseball again. But then I had to get a real job. And I got a job in one of the most boring industries on the planet. I got a job in banking. Day three, this tall old guy come in. He said, hi Michael, I'm Tom, I'm the CEO, let's have a chat. He said to me, Michael, where do you see yourself in five years time? All I cared about was who I was hanging out with on a Friday night. I had no idea where I was going to be in five years' time. But my mum, she always taught me, son, shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you'll end up in the stars. So I thought, right, now's my time to shine. Tom, five years' time, I'm going to take your job. Don't ever say that to the CEO, okay? <laughs> don't ever say it. doesn't get arrogant. I remember he said to me, Mike, I don't know whether that's arrogance or determination, but only tell, time will tell. And me being a 19-year-old smart ass, I responded with, you're right, Tom, only time will tell. So we were not mates at all. <laughs> we didn't get on very well at all. But by the time I was 20, I was the youngest bank manager in Australia. 21, youngest area manager, 22, youngest state manager. By the time I was 23, I was one of the youngest national sales development managers for one of the largest companies in the world. And I climbed the corporate ladder way too quickly. I was driven by the three Ps that I promise you will destroy you. I was driven by power, privileges, and possessions. I had to live in the million dollar house, I had to drive the $100,000 sports car, I had to wear the Rolexes and the Armani suits. I had to create the perception of what I thought success was. I lived beyond my means, I had so much debt trying to make myself look bigger than what I really was. But as you all know, life is like a roller coaster. You can get to a pinnacle point in your life and it can get taken away from you in a heartbeat. One bad choice, one bad decision, your whole world can change. I was a big banker, I knew all about money. So I invested all my mum's money and the return that I was going to get from that investment was going to help pay to put a roof over my mum's head. That was about six weeks before the GFC hit. I lost all of my mum's money. And it was because of my ego and arrogance that nearly destroyed my mum's life. I was so far away from what I thought success was. I thought that success was about the materialistic possessions I could gain. But I wasn't even close. I walked away from the corporate world. I had a dream and a goal and a vision to make a global impact. And people laughed at me. People laughed at me when I told them what my dream was. And I love when people tell me what I can't do because it makes me work really hard to show them that I can. I realized I needed to master two things. The first thing I needed to master was what success was and now I understand what it is. Success is about getting out of bed every single day and knowing in your heart that you can make a difference in somebody else's life. But the second thing I need to understand and master was this whole gift of giving. Because for me, for a long time, I always thought the saying was, the more you give, the more you shall receive. But that saying is wrong. The saying should be, the more you give, expecting nothing in return, the more you shall receive. And then I started my own charity called Frontier Projects, where every cent gets sent. We are less than 1% of charity in the world where we donate every single dollar that comes through the door. And our first project was this place. We went to Haiti. We went over there and we rebuilt a school for 120 little kids in a remote village called Bouvier, a 10 hour trek from the epicenter of the earthquake. The reason why we built it where we did is because we found out these young kids were walking three hours of a morning and three hours of an afternoon to get an education. We must help other people that are less fortunate than what we are because I promise you when you help somebody that is less fortunate than what you are, you will get a big dose of perspective. 
And sometimes that's all we need. My wife was telling me over and over again to go and get checked. I continually ignored it until eventually I had to go because she made the appointment. I went to the doctors and unfortunately the doctor found four tumours in my throat. They told me that my tomorrows weren't guaranteed and I needed to slow down. I had surgery and um, they removed three out of the four tumours. Unfortunately, the fourth tumour is wrapped around my vocal cord. There's nothing they can do about it. Over the last two years, it hasn't grown one millimetre, which is tremendous news. But I've realised the quality of one's life is not dictated or determined by the amount of days that we live on this earth. It's about what we fit into those days that allows us to live a remarkable life. But one thing that I wanted to achieve more than anything in the world was the one thing they said I'd never be able to achieve. And that was to one day become a dad. I think to be a parent is without a doubt one of the greatest gifts that God could give us. They said I'd never be able to be a parent and they were wrong again. So we were due to have a baby the last week in February 2018. But as you all know, life doesn't always go according to plan. And my wife had a lot of back pain. We went to the doctors and we were told that she was two centimeters dilated. But four days later on the 12th of December at 6.40 p.m., we had a beautiful little baby boy named Lachlan James, weighing 2.8 pound, 10 weeks early, who was very, very unwell. I realized so quickly that it's so much easier to be in the bed than standing next to it, right? They said, your boy's getting stronger. We're gonna fly him back to Coffs Harbor where he can spend the next two months and then you can finally take him home. So we were so excited and then uh, we landed in Coffs Harbour and he had a cardiac issue. They did some tests and they told us that um, they thought our little boy had an illness called sepsis, a blood disease. They told us that we had four days with our little boy. I had to prepare my little boy's funeral. It was the first time in my life that I've walked a day in my mum's shoes. I understood what true pain was. He went into cardiac arrest twice on the plane flying to Sydney where they resuscitated our little boy. And he was smiling. And I just knew that everything was gonna be okay. That was 14 months ago. Now he's the cutest little baby on the planet. I thank God every day that he looks like his mum and not his dad. You know, he, uh, he shits more than we could imagine. <laughs> and he eats more than we could imagine. But I got to tell you, we love him more than we could ever imagine. He's opened up a new valve in my heart to understand what true love is. And I'm so grateful every day to have this sweet little miracle in our life. You know, someone said to me the other day, geez, Michael, you've been dealt with some really shit cards. I remember saying back, that's one thing we all have in common. We've all been dealt cards. But I begin to understand that whilst ever I'm being dealt cards, that means I'm still in the game. And whilst ever I'm still in the game, it's about how I choose to play those cards that determines the amazing life that I get to live. Every one of you has been dealt a hand of cards. Don't spend your life trying to compare your cards to other people because their cards are better than yours. You can still win the game if you play them effectively. Get up every day and be grateful of the cards that you've got. Be grateful that you're still in the game. I challenge you to do something every day that your future self will be proud of. I refuse to die an unlived life. And I finally got a chance to give back to that one woman who sacrificed so much of her life for me. To put a pink ribbon on a brand new door to a brand new home for my mum was without a doubt one of the greatest days of my life. But the smile, the tone, the voice, to pop around and see her playing in the garden, makes me finally proud of the man that I've become. I want people to understand that when they're at that low point, when they think life's not fair, I promise you that's your discovery moment. You discover not how unfair your life is, but you discover how powerful you have been created.